what is it about? You know, they're asking immediately, what is it about? Mm -hmm. I had so many opportunities to witness in Barnes and Noble that it was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And I just stood there mm -hmm. going, what in the world is this? <laughs> it was so yeah. crazy. I just, yeah. I, I guess in my head, I just didn't realize until I saw people standing in front of me that this was going to be a tool to mm -hmm. use to tell mm -hmm. people about Jesus that had never heard him before. And just, I know that for some people that's like, well, you didn't think about that before. Well, I thought about the book being that, but the fact that I could stand there and give God's word to somebody and say, you know, you need this would be great for you to read. Um, I just, yeah, I love that word witness because I just mm -hmm. used it today in saying I got to be a witness to somebody to tell them about Christ. And that was mm -hmm. huge, huge to me. Mm -hmm. I love that you said that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, back to that same, uh, that same, Angela, I just wanted to say, um, thank you so much for mentioning about the watching the replay because uh, I had totally forgot to push record. So now <laughs> I push record. It's recording. So yes, Yay. there will be a replay. Yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead, Katie. Tell us. Well, back to that same to that same trip where I went and bought the Bible, and I remember bringing it home and um, kind of fumbled through it. You know, I, I was a little honestly disappointed. That's part of part of the thing that God has used in me is wanting to. I knew a lot of knowledge, but then wanting to go study the Bible and read it for myself and opening it for the, in some ways, the first time, you know, mm -hmm. in a new way. Um, and I just had no idea, no idea what I was reading. I mean, I, w I was frustrated I, and <laughs> I was let down, not by God, not by his word, but myself, I guess. And, um, but, you know, over, even though I was mm -hmm. fumbling through that throughout my senior year of trying to figure out where to read and how to read it and what does it mean? Um, vividly remember, and this was the very first time that God's word spoke to me, you know, in such a way where I was reading it and I was like, those words were written for me. And, um, it was in, in, uh, mm -hmm. Psalm 42, you know, as the deer panteth for the water. And I was so upset and I'm, I can't remember all the details, but I just remember it was just boy stuff and, and just typical teenage angst. And, you know, my heart was just heavy and I was just over things. And in, and in the, in the word, it, it, it says how, why are you so downcast on my soul? You know, why are you in all this turmoil? And then he says, hope in God for I will yet praise him again. And I wasn't so encouraged by the hope in God part as I was the, why are you so downcast my soul? I guess it was like this realization of, well, the people in the Bible didn't have it all together either. Their their soul mm -hmm. hurt too. And my soul hurts. Yep. And this resonates mm -hmm. with me. Why are you mm -hmm. so downcast on my yes. soul? That question. And, you know, of course, there's promise after yeah. promise of, of what he can and will do for us. Um, the same mm -hmm. season of life. A friend of mine, as I was getting ready to leave for mm -hmm. Auburn, bought this little plaque. And it was Jeremiah 29, 11. I never heard that verse before. That for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And as I literally stood on this, I don't know anybody and I could be anything and this could be a disaster, that that, that promise that God has good plans for me was just was a timely, timely word. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. I just okay. love that. How it's like mm -hmm. right to your heart, you know, mm -hmm. that he can just speak through his word mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. i remember a time when uh like like you katie uh a really just really hard day um mm -hmm. and like uh some some the people that i had been discipling or a girl i did been discipling just like <laughs> reamed me out you know about this mm -hmm. false information stuff that wasn't even mm -hmm. true and it was so discouraging and heartbreaking mm -hmm. and a couple other things happened um, ministry wise. And I was, I was so mad that I just didn't even want to talk. You know, it was just like, yeah. <laughs> and um, Austin and I, when we remember play a game, like the what's true game, you know, so trying to think about mm -hmm. what's true. So we tried to think through scripture of things that could bring us back to what's true. And he was saying these verses and I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. But um, and then when he used the um, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because, you know, the testing of your faith develops perseverance. It was just like, oh, yes, yes, that's right. You know, and it was yeah. I, it just um, 
it seems it's like, like a that uses to, mm -hmm. yes yeah. yeah comfort mm -hmm. you in a way like seems like nothing else really can because it's like mm -hmm. inside you know mm -hmm. not just like a hug on the outside or something yeah <laughs> i just love how god can do that mm -hmm. um so what uh it can be especially in different seasons it can be really hard uh to spend time with the lord um or different uh different things come up or you know it just can be hard and uh, what can you guys, what tips do you guys have for spending time with the Lord um, in his word? Um, or, uh, yeah, thoughts, tips along that, along those lines. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I love that you said that. I know. Okay. We, uh, well, we love Hello Mornings, right, Katie? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We're way into it. Um, I remember several years ago, my son, when he was about four years old, um, I'm doing, I'm like trying to do the, the right quiet time thing. And I'm up early in the morning and I'm reading my Bible. My son, he pads down the stairs and he says, Mom, what are you reading? I said, I'm reading the Bible, honey. And he said, really? And I went, like, <laughs> Yeah, I read it every day. I just read it the morning before you wake up or I wake or I read it at night after you go to bed. And I realized that by trying to do my quiet time the right way that I had failed, I had neglected to model mm. for my kids that this we do this every day. Mm. Like, this is important. So mm -hmm. I still wanted to have my, you know, my own quiet time, but I had to then be more intentional about including my kids in quiet time mm -hmm. and, and saving some of my quiet time for when my kids are in the room right. with me. Like they yeah. need to see. To have an overlap. Is, you know. mm -hmm, there needs mm -hmm. to be an overlap. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that 100%. I, I love that early morning mm -hmm. hit of at least yeah. one verse to get you going for the day. But I will just be totally honest with you. <laughs> I am not a morning person. My husband and I are perfectly happy. We are perfectly happy to not say a word to each other at all mm -hmm. until he leaves for work. We're really, I mean, we're like, okay, bye. I love you. I love mm -hmm. you too. Okay. Have a good day. And that's it. That's the extent of it because mm -hmm. we are just not conversationalists in the morning. And so I always looked at it like it's a great way for me to start the day with a verse or something short, a short devotional. Or, But as far as studying God's word, I think God likes the better side of me when I give him a better quality of time than when I do, you know, just waking up and going, mm -hmm. OK, let's see yeah. if I can keep my eyes open for this chapter here, you know. And so I had to learn to be flexible and to appreciate longer studies at different times of the day, you know, depending on the season of life we're in with the kids, you know, if I had three napping, then yeah, that was a great time to do my Bible study, you know, for a half hour, or, you know, 20 minutes or whatever my goal was. But I um, just learned to, to be flexible according to the season of life, because we've had many of them, as you can imagine, with kids <laughs> from 24 down to age four. <laughs> So I think that flexibility, recognizing mm -hmm. that flexibility is is really important. I love the morning time. I really do. I love to spend that short time, but it it just doesn't always mm -hmm. happen. And, and you can't beat yourself up when it doesn't mm -hmm. happen because life yeah. happens and you can't control yeah. all of that. And the Holy Spirit knows that. So he's going to be, you know, you. there have been times where my best devotions were sitting in the car line while two kids were watching videos mm -hmm. and I was waiting to mm -hmm. pick someone up, you know, um, because you yeah. just make it work with yeah. whatever. Those car lines. I always have a Bible in my minivan, right? Mm -hmm. For all those car lines. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think something. Oh, go ahead. Well, I'm a big app. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, that's okay. I was just going to say I'm a big app user for the, mm -hmm. I, I love my olive tree Bible app. Like, it's marked up, you know, everybody says, why don't you switch to another app? This one's better. Or that one's better. I'm like, ah, mm -hmm. that one's, I already have my highlights and it just keeps following me. And so I stick with it, but I love the app for that reason. Yeah. I've got it. Well, it's something I heard years and years and years ago. And it was like this aha light bulb moment is that there is nothing in the Bible that says you should have a daily quiet time at a certain amount of at a certain time of day and it should be a certain amount of time and you should do this and you should do this and you should do this mm -hmm. in that quiet time. 
that it's not in it's not in the Bible. Now, what is in the Bible is that we should not let the word of the Lord depart from our mouth, but we should meditate on it day and night. So if if we're going to try to take that literally, then that would mean we'd have to sit in front of our Bibles all day long. But that's not what it means. Right. It, we need to do whatever helps us keep the word of God on our minds and our hearts on our lips. And for some that's listening to the Bible, for some that's memorizing scripture, that's probably the best way to keep God's word on our heart, on our minds, on our lips. Um, it, it can be a combination of all those, having scripture up in our house, having it on our phone, putting it up in our shower, just doing whatever. And that is is in some ways just as valuable as sitting down at a table with a cup of coffee in our Bible open and our colored pencils, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you all know, and anybody that knows me knows, I am a big Bible study girl. I mean, I'm like, get your Bibles open and study it, you know? But I think we've got to start from this place of, I don't have to do this to be a good Christian. Mm -hmm. we, we've got to come to this place of, I love the word and I want to know God more because mm -hmm. that is the best way that we can know God mm -hmm. is, you know, he, he reveals himself to us through nature. Yeah. He reveals himself to us through, through people, but he prime, I mean, the most black and white way that we can learn about God is through his Bible. And if yeah. through his Bible, through his word, through the Bible, you know, and that is got to be, the, the main reason why we're coming to scripture, not because we want to become better at Bible study or not because we feel like we should do it. I think that's the heart of what everybody's been saying tonight. Mm -hmm. But just hearing that was so eye opening to me. I think it was in my 20s and it was like, oh, yeah. And it really set me up. OK, because then I was started having kids and it was like I went from having, you know, hours of time in the Bible at Starbucks whenever I wanted to really, you know, and then I got married and there was a little bit of change if I wanted to, you know. There was a, some changes there when I got married and then I had kids and that went out the window quick. And that was really hard adjustment for me to understand mm -hmm. that I'm OK. You know, like God is still speaking to me and I am still learning about God. Mm -hmm. It's just it, it looks different. And so I think it's just really opening our hands and mm -hmm. and letting go of our expectations of what so and so looks like and what so and so is doing and how it should look like. There's no should in the Bible of what our time with God should look like. Right. Not that I can think of. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome, Katie. Um, yeah. Cause, and, and I just love that too, Rachel, because, um, like I'm way more of a, after a cup of coffee, um, way more of a morning person than I am at nighttime. It's my husband. Um, hey. and, uh, so at nighttime, like my brain, I think it shuts off. You know, it's just like, mm -hmm. ask me a question. I think, uh -huh. I don't know. Do I know the answer to that? I don't know if I know the answer to that. Um, so yeah, finding a time that, that is right for you and that works and that can fit. Um, and I've also found that we have to be greedy with that time, you know, um, and be flexible knowing that, you know, it's just not going to be perfect. It's not going to look like how it always has before. Um, but to try to like make sacrifices or try to, um, uh, not be lazy and just letting it go, you know, mm -hmm. um, which was mm -hmm. a big, a, yeah. I don't know, a big thing for me going through the transition of, you know, having kids and what the heck is this going to look like? How do I do this? And, um, yeah, so that's, I, mm -hmm. yes, I'm grateful for your good thoughts and, um, ideas. Um, see here, it's my brain now. <laughs> There was another thought that I had. Uh, oh, well, it'll come back to me. Um, oh, oh, about how you're saying, um, like, just check it off the list and stuff. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, I, I grew up with that same mentality of, like, um, acceptance, you know, performance acceptance and trying to, like, be the best Christian I could. Um, and mm -hmm. also, like, in when I would go to God, it was kind of like I would be – um, like on my own trying to figure out who he was instead of being like, Hey God, mm -hmm. I actually can't mm -hmm. figure you out. Will you reveal yourself to me? Um, mm -hmm. And it's a subtle mm -hmm. difference, but it, it made all the difference in the world to me because then he would open my eyes and help me understand things versus mm -hmm. like me trying to like get something out of it, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And yeah. that it yeah, still makes a difference. You know, if I'm just, if my motives are just to do it, or if um, I just am trying to like 
get something good, you know, or learn something mm -hmm. cool, you know, versus mm -hmm. like, God, what do you want to say? Like, what do you, what do you want me to see here when, with mm -hmm. what I'm re reading, you know? Um, yeah. But, well, and even a side um, note with ministry too, is that, and I think in some ways everybody, you know, God does a work in our heart and then the natural result is to teach other people, maybe not for everybody, but in some way, even if it's to your children or to your friends or whatever, the natural thing is to want to regurgitate that, what God has taught us. Mm -hmm. So then as you minister to them, then it's tricky because then you have this place of, am I going to God's word so that I have a word to give to other people? Or am I going mm -hmm. to God's word because I want to hear from him, mm -hmm. not because I want to tweet something out that sounds cool or write yeah, about yeah. you know what I mean like right. and I think pastors yeah. pastors probably deal with that too is that they're in the word all the time all the yeah. time uh, because they've got to preach it every week but if they're you know there's just a difference when it <laughs> turns it's almost like I'm going back to high school and the bible's back on my shelf in the locker mm -hmm. instead of on my lap because I I need it and it, I, it's yeah. life to me you know and so I think that um whether or not you call yourself a bible teacher it, there, it's it's a it's a line that we can cross. Maybe we're doing it because we want to impress other people, or we want to be able to say, "Yeah, I had my quiet time this morning." Instead of just doing it, whether or not anybody knows, just because it's a date with God, you know. So yeah, yeah, that's mm -hmm. good. Katie, will you um, will you tell us a little bit about you have um, some Bible studies coming out in January, um, which look amazing. Would you tell us about Thanks. them, please? Yes, um, it is. A, they're three separate studies. They're each four week studies and they use what I call the focused 15 method. It's an ac acronym of focus that you do a different thing each day. You study a, a, a passage of scripture over a week's time and look at it with different lenses for five days. And so um, one, the first one is on every day of faith everyday hope and everyday love. And so there's certainly a theme and they're related, but they are three standalone studies. Just looking at what does having faith every day look like? It tends to be feel like it's like this Indiana Jones got to climb up the hill and jump off the cliff and just believe that the that the bridge is there. If you remember that scene, you know, um, that that faith isn't always this do or die situation. It's moment by moment, everyday faith. So what does it look like to um, have faith? And it's a studies of he study of Hebrews 11. And then everyday love is first Corinthians 13 and just looking at it uh, through a different, different perspective. It's not always what we think it is. And then hope is really, um, it's a very, it's, it was the hardest to write, honestly, but I think God's going to do something um, really big with it. It's really, mm -hmm. a, it's a, it's all about our salvation and how our salvation gives us hope. And that if we are living in a hopelessness, if we are not experiencing everyday hope, it's because we either don't understand the gospel or we have forgotten the gospel. And so mm -hmm. it goes through four different passages of understanding mm -hmm. what does our hope yeah. look like? So they'll be available January 4th. And yeah. yeah, I'm like super excited and want to throw up all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I don't, it, I can't it, explain uh, it exactly. Besides that, excited. It's like a dream uh, that I never knew I had. That's coming to uh, fulfillment. And every step I take, and every step I closer I get to it, I realize how excited I am, and that this is what God's called me to do. But I really just want to yeah. throw up when I think about it. <laughs> just that it's going to be you, out there. Would you say people are going to read it? like recommended um for groups to use or individuals or type you know something to, to yes use during both the um, they're great time. discipleship tools because it's an inductive study method and so really my hope is that after you've done two or three focus 15 studies that you can go to any scripture any passage of scripture and study it on your own so it really gives an inductive bible study method um, that, you know, as you get practice, you can go anywhere and, and look it up. We look at how to look up original languages. We look up how to cross reference, how to just observe oh. what's there, um, and also application, but it's, it's all in under 15 minutes a day. That's why it's called focus 15 is because I really want to make it manageable, um, that you could do it 15 minutes a day, or there's always bonus, bonus studies. So. You can learn more at focus 15.com. Yay. They sound so great. So <laughs> Amazon. You. Barnes and Noble or I mean, where, where would people go? Every, it should be everywhere. It will be in Lifeway, all, all stores in Lifeway. Um, just pretty much anywhere that you would find other Bible studies should be there and definitely Amazon 
all that stuff. I don't know if it's going to be at Barnes and Noble, honestly, in the stores, but it should be on all the, um, you know, normal, normal internet channels. outlets. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And where can people find you, Katie, if they want to connect with you? Uh, Katie or dot me. And yeah, you can get to my Twitter and all that stuff from there. So Katie or dot me, K A T I E O R R dot me. And you can learn about the studies at focus 15.com. Yay. So. All right. And Rachel, so you just have um, a, just had a book launch this last week, right? Yeah. Which is fun. Yeah. Would you tell Are us you exhausted? Oh, it's been exciting. <laughs> Very exciting. Mm -hmm. I'm not as tired Good. as I was last week. I'm a little more energetic, but mm -hmm. there has been a lot of back to back. That's for sure. I'm so, um, I, I'm, it's such a pleasure to meet with the three of you and just talk Bible study because that really is my favorite. You know, that's mm -hmm. um, Crystal Evans Hurst calls me Bible study girl. And she's like, I hope you're not offended when I call you that. And I'm like, I am not offended at all. I love it. It's pretty awesome. But my book is called One More Step. The subtitle is mm -hmm. Finding Strength When You Feel Like Giving Up. And it really is a book for hurting people. Although we've had some great feedback from people who say, you know what, I'm not in a current situation or place in my life where I'm having struggles, but I sure wish I would have had this book, you know, six months ago when I was, or this is a great book to give to people who are in that season or better yet. I still learned a lot, even though mm -hmm. I'm not struggling right now. And so I thought that that was um, such a great compliment to show that it really is turning the focus to encourage people mm -hmm. just to run to mm -hmm. God's word when discouragement strikes and to really um, just pursue an intimate relationship with Jesus so that you can face those mm -hmm. storms, whether you're in one right now or whether they're coming ahead, because we all mm -hmm. have those seasons regardless of when they are. And so I'm really excited. I'm just to share the message of that with you and that, you know, it's, we're focused on God's word at the end of every chapter. There are pillars of truth to lean on. It's five verses between five and seven verses that I really want you to take away and learn from. And then um, there's also at the end of each chapter, a stepping stone section. So if you go to my website, rachelwojo.com, you can click on the big one more step and that will take you to the one more step website where you can download all sorts of freebies. We have um, a discussion guide, but mostly I want you to see the stepping stones journal. It's a beautiful prayer journal that just takes you through the stepping stones at the end of every chapter of the book. And that is a free download. So you can go get that now and enjoy. You can also download Great. the first chapter of the book for free. So like I said, if you know someone going through a hard time, if you, you know, have just gone through a hard time or regardless of where you are, I think that mm. finding strength when you feel like giving up is yeah. um, just a relevant topic for yeah. anyone in any season of life. And so that's the feedback we've gotten. Yes, Thank you so yes. much for having me, Laura. And wouldn't and it be I would love um, to appropriate for people who, to Denise, you know, a lot of times sorry, when somebody's going through off. something difficult, I, just, I want to love them well, you know, and I just, mm -hmm. I know all the lots of ways to not and <laughs> end up, you know, hurting them, you know, by little, yeah. you know, would it be a good book for helping someone to know how to, to love people better too, just by that are going through hard things? I think yeah. so. I think so. Yeah. I think that um, I, it's a very personal book. You know, I tell a lot of um, our family story as far as, the fact that I, I lost my mom to cancer, you know, my um, ex-husband was a preacher and we went through divorce. And um, then I have a child who is 19 who has a rare metabolic disorder called MPS. And the average lifespan mm. for her disease is 10 to 15 years. So I think that um, the vantage point God has put me in the place that he's put me in is just to share the message from the place that I'm not, I'm not speaking mm -hmm. over the mountain to you. 
I'm not yelling down to you. Yeah, this is what you mm-hmm. need to do when you encounter these situations. Mm-hmm. I'm really just speaking from my heart of, mm-hmm. okay, I've been through some rough stuff and this is how mm-hmm. I That's managed awesome. to get through it. And what I know God's mm-hmm. word can do for That's you awesome. to get you through mm-hmm. it. Great. Sounds good. Thanks so okay. much, Laura. I'm oh, gonna no problem. Where can I'm people so find you on your website? Off, um, I really need to. So, yes. RachelWojo.com. You yes. Too. Denise, Katie you is too. so great. Congratulations. You. Love you guys both. Yes. I know. Everything. Keep, keep serving yes. the Lord. And thank thing, you so Rachel. much, Laura, yes. for having All right. me. Bye. And Denise, um, your book has been wonderful too. Um, and just uh, on becoming a better writer. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> here's, Wisdom is just, you know, the the knowledge that you have and how you're so generous in um, helping others, you know, uh, in their writing is great. Um, so mm-hmm. where, so that's on Amazon. Yes, we could find that on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and where can people find you if they want to connect with you? And I'm at denisejhughes.com um, and then also deeperwaters.us. So those are the two main websites. Oh, and then I write the Sunday devotions at Encourage. So Encourage with an I dot me. Mm-hmm. Yay. You got, you got some studies coming up, Denise. Yep. What's that? Is that open news or? <laughs> I guess oh, like, yeah. 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 So, uh, <laughs> well, yeah. Um, so I'm writing two Bible studies. They will be released Yay. next uh, June 1st, July 1st. I teach writing, I teach literature, I'm an English professor. So I love the world of words where life and literature connect, but there's only one book with living words and that's my favorite book to teach. So I'm super excited. I'm gonna be um, writing these Bible studies that teach each book of the Bible. I'm teaching them like teaching books. Um, so I they're, love called, that. they're called Word Writers. The series is called Word Writers and the first two, Uh, The first one's on Ephesians. The second one is on Philippians. They are inductive Bible studies, making the Bible the primary source, and then just leading um, women through God's word, understanding the historical context, the literary form, and the spiritual truths. Mm -hmm. So I'm super excited about word writers. So they'll all be, will they all be available in, did you say June or July? Ephesians will be available June 1st, and the one okay. on Philippians will be available July 1st. Wow, that is so exciting. That is yeah. so cool. Man, well, I am so grateful for you guys. Thank you so much for Thank using you your words and using Thank your you. skills and love for God's word to really bless people all over. Um, it's a big deal. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, is there any other last comments or anything you guys want to share no just thanks wow. for having us yeah, and thank you laura for having great us. job hosting fun. yeah great host yeah blab is so much fun i this know is it is blab. it is i appreciate it well you guys have a good night and i will um chat with you guys later thanks great. laura thanks bye, laura bye, bye.